memorial supper, five days after Jesus rode on the ark, offering himself as Israel's king, came the Passover, typical of the passing over of the church of the firstborn. Jesus was the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. In order to do this, he must be the Passover Lamb. St. Paul says, Christ our Passover is slain. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Jesus ate the typical Passover lamb with his disciples. Then he took unleavened bread and fruit of the vine as representing his own flesh and his own blood and instituted an antitypical Passover supper. Jesus' followers were to do this in remembrance of his death as the antitypical lamb. He said, Except ye eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man, ye have no life in you. Of course, the outward performance would be nothing, except as it would symbolize heart experiences. In their heart, Jesus' followers must realize that his death is the ransom price for the sins of the whole world, that without it, there would be no everlasting life. Such believers constitute the church of the firstborn, who pass into life in advance of the world in the first resurrection. St. Paul shows a still deeper meaning to the memorial supper. All the followers of Jesus are represented in the one loaf that is being broken and are sharing in the one cup of suffering, shame, ignominy, and death. Only such will be members of his glorious body, the world, prophet like unto Moses. The disciples neglected to wash each other's feet or even the masters. Jesus performed the service as a lesson in humility, not as a ceremonial. The spirit of the lesson is that we render each other any service possible as members of Christ. After the supper, Jesus with the eleven went to Gethsemane, where Judas betrayed him to the officials with a kiss. Then followed the memorable closing scenes of our Lord's life.